Imagine a train that doesn't ride on rails, but instead hovers above them, gliding silently on a cushion of air at over 100 miles per hour. It sounds like science fiction, but in the early 1970s, Britain came astonishingly close to making this dream a reality. This is the story of the Tracked Hovercraft, a bold, futuristic project that aimed to revolutionise high-speed rail travel, but ultimately became one of Britain's great lost transport dreams. The Tracked Hovercraft was an experimental high-speed train developed in the UK during the 1960s and early 1970s. It combined two cutting-edge technologies, the air cushion lift of a hovercraft and a linear induction motor, which would propel the vehicle along a specially constructed concrete guideway without any physical contact. No wheels, no steel rails, just pure levitation and magnetic propulsion. The idea first took shape in the early 1960s at Hovercraft Development Lenty in Hythe, Hampshire. Engineers experimented with small hovertrain models, and by 1967, a dedicated company, Tracked Hovercraft Lettid, was formed with strong government support. Spearheaded by the brilliant but controversial Professor Eric Lathwaite, a pioneer in linear motor technology, the project attracted major funding and national attention. A one-mile test track was constructed in the Cambridgeshire Fens, near Erith. Though the original plan called for 20 miles of guideway, funding limitations restricted its scope. The main prototype vehicle, known as RTV31, was an impressive sight, sleek, futuristic and entirely unlike anything else on the rails at the time. It looked more like something from a Jerry Anderson television series than a real train. On the 7th of February 1973, RTV31 made history by reaching a speed of 104 miles per hour on the short test track. An incredible achievement considering it was essentially floating on air. The hovertrain had proven its concept and its designers believed that it could one day reach speeds well over 200 miles per hour. But just one week later, the dream came crashing down. The government, now unconvinced of the project's practicality and value, abruptly pulled the plug. Minister Michael Heseltine cited high costs and concerns about the long timescales needed for commercial viability. The tracked hovercraft project was officially cancelled. Why did it fail? There were many reasons. Cost was a major factor, as was competition from other high-speed rail technologies, like British Rail's advanced passenger train. There were also practical concerns. The enormous power demands of air cushion lift the noise and the challenge of building entirely new infrastructure across the country. And yet, the tracked hovercraft left behind a fascinating legacy. Although the full system never entered service, it helped advance linear motor technology, which would later be used in maglev trains. Its experimental spirit inspired engineers around the world. Today, you can see RTV 31 preserved at Railworld Wildlife Haven in Peterborough, a ghost of a future that never came to be. The original test track near Erith is now mostly gone, though some concrete piers can still be found in the landscape, a quiet reminder of a time when Britain was at the very edge of transport innovation. So, what if things had gone differently? Could we be riding hovertrains today? skimming across the country at unheard of speeds? The tracked hovercraft remains one of the most extraordinary what-ifs in British rail history. If you enjoyed this journey into the lost future of transport, please don't forget to like this video, share it with others who love railway history, and subscribe to the channel for more fascinating stories from the forgotten corners of innovation. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.